Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. I'm Chris Cottrell, and today I want to take a quick break from saving Arabia Bay sediments and extracting magnetic grains to discuss another scientific topic that has really been on my mind lately. Uh, this topic isn't directly related to our focus on the Carolina Bays or the Younger Dryas impact, but it is related by the way that there has been a major disconnect between academic disciplines, making it difficult for us to see the big picture. And, you know, that's kind of what I try to do here. I try to connect those dots. Now, at the time of this recording, you know, and it's, it's only uh, early 2020. Uh, and if you've been paying attention, this past year has been a very noteworthy time when it comes to the tectonic activity on our planet. You know, just in the past two months alone, uh, we've had a few major volcanic eruptions in the South Pacific, as well as some abnormal seismic activity in the Caribbean. Now, I have been paying attention and I've seen all kinds of crazy ideas floating around, you know, trying to explain away this current rash of activity. But the real answer isn't only easily explained with very basic scientific processes, but it's also very predictable. So let's take a look at how gravitational attractions that are in our solar system can affect our tectonics here on Earth. Uh, probably the most uh, the most well-known gravitational attraction the Earth has is with our closest neighbor, the Moon. You know, every day the Earth spins under the Moon's watchful eye, and as it does, the gravitational attraction between the two masses literally pulls the fluid surface waters of our oceans towards it. And this creates what, uh, what we know of as tides. Uh, for most places on the globe, depending on the ocean's surface area, we see just less than two tides per day and it's offset by about 50 minutes each day. Um, oh, and by the way, I really do like this GIF up here. Um, not only does it show the rotation of the Earth and the bulge of water being pulled both towards and away from the moon, you know, which is Newton's third law in action, uh, it also shows us one full day's worth of arc motion for the moon's 27.32 day journey around the Earth, uh, or one moonth. Now, when it comes to gravitational attractions, we can't leave out the most massive object in the solar system, and that's our sun. You know, even though our sun is much further away, uh, it's also much more massive, you know, than our sun, than our moon. Uh, and its gravitational attraction affects us in much the same way. Every moon, there's a tug of war between our fluid oceans and the gravitational pull between the moon and the sun. And when these massive gravitational bodies line up like they do during a new moon and a full moon, the tides are amplified and we get what's aptly named a spring tide. Uh, and when the moon is perpendicular to the sun, we get what is a, a neap tide, which is the smallest tides of the month. So spring tide, that's the highest of the high tides for the month. And neap tides are the smallest tides of the month. But let's take it one step further. You know, the oceans aren't the only fluid spheres on Earth that can be attracted by gravitational forces. You know, in fact, much of the Earth's interior is molten uh, or in a fluid state. And the tidal forces that affect our oceans are also affecting these inner fluid spheres. You know, the pulls and the strains on a daily, monthly, or even yearly basis are fairly predictable but I do have to say that they're not very well documented. You know, there are, uh, you know, there are a few papers out there that discuss this, these relationships, uh, and, and I'll include a few links in the description below. Uh, but there's a really big opportunity here for any young and eager geology student who wants to quantify these relationships. You know, tide charts and moon phase charts, seismic activity records, you know, all of the data that you would need to make these correlations are available. Uh, and I will say this, that the examples that I had um, on my opening slide, uh, they all occurred on or very near a full moon or a new moon. But you know what? There's even more to this story. There are other very large gravitational masses in our solar system that can and do affect us here on Earth. The gas giants of Jupiter and Saturn come in at number two and three for our most massive objects in the solar system. Now, normally this isn't a big deal, you know, as the, the masses are spread out through, through the, throughout the solar system, um, you know, as each planet makes its own revolution around the sun. But every now and again, the planets of our solar system are arranged in such a way that the tidal forces on Earth 
are going to be magnified, you know, just like when the moon is in its new or full phase. As you can see here, you know, not all of the planetary years are created equal. You know, it takes us 365 days to make one full revolution around the sun. But Jupiter takes 12 of our Earth years to go all the way around the sun once. And Saturn takes up to 30 Earth years to make just one lap around the sun. You know, these planetary motions combined with the gravitational forces of their mass should and do set up a very predictable tidal forces, you know, very predictable tidal forces here on Earth. Uh, this image is the uh, current planetary uh, arrangement for our solar system. Again, this is the end of January 2020. Uh, notice where the, the Earth and the Moon, the Sun, and both Jupiter and Saturn are located. You know, we are basically coming out of a cosmic spring tide right now. Uh, and by the way, this website right here is really pretty awesome. Uh, it's uh, www.theplanetstoday.com. Let's go and click over there and take a look at a few things uh, before we wrap up this video. Okay, here we are. Um, so you can see this is today. Again, this is the, uh, January 31st, 2020. Uh, and you can see where the Earth and the Moon and the Sun and those two other large you know, gravitational masses in our solar system are located. Uh, and so, again, when those tidal forces or when those gravitational pulls and strains all line up like that, uh, we're going to see some increased tectonic activity on our planet. Uh, and what I really like about this website is that we can actually manipulate a few things. And one of those is time. So let's go ahead and just kind of speed things up. I want to see what, what this is going to look like when the Earth goes around the sun and pretty much lines up again with these planets, uh, making it basically another you know, cosmic spring tide. Uh, and let's just see where we'll be when that happens. And so we speed that up. You can actually see the, the, the phases of the moon here going in and out. These are months passing by. Um, and notice all of these planets moving around. Again, they don't move around the sun equally, uh, and we're getting closer and closer to where I want to stop, right about there. All right, so I'm going to stop right here. Uh, this is, let's see, July 19th, 2020, and so this is in the future, but if you're watching this now and uh, you are seeing some increased, uh, increased tectonic activity here on Earth, I want you to go ahead and, and, and Make a comment in the description below just saying, Cottrell, you, you, you nailed this one. Uh, but anyways, here's the sun, here's the earth, here's the moon. Everything is lining up in just a way where those tidal forces of our solar system are going to amplify the tectonic activity on our planet. Uh, and so that's really going to be important as we go into this. And again, this is, um, you know, we have been getting into this increase in tectonic activity uh, over the past couple of years. And that's because of Jupiter and Saturn getting closer to each other. You know, and as we were going into those those neap and uh, going into those spring tide uh, phases of the year, uh, they've amplified our, our own activity. So let's go ahead and, and, and let this uh, speed up again. I want to see what it's going to look like as we get into 2021. Now, during this time, I expect to see less volcanic activity. And, and, I, and I'm not saying that the Earth is going to crack open, you know, anything like that. Uh, we're just talking about a, an increase uh, in timing uh, of some of these volcanic eruptions. And I think that's very safe to say. There we go. There we go. Get another line up here. All right. So we are in another cosmic neap tide uh, for for our tidal forces in, in the universe or in the solar system, excuse me. Uh, and so you can see here's the Earth. Here's the moon. Here's the sun. And Jupiter and Saturn are still very close by. It's going to take them a few years to get out of this cycle until they're far enough apart where that that gravitational attraction isn't going to be an issue anymore. Uh, and so, so this, as this happens again, it's going to just take time. Uh, here we are, um, uh, right in the middle of January, 2021. Uh, and, and again, we should definitely, we will probably see an increase in the, in the tectonic activity on our planet when these things line up like this. Uh, and it's important that we understand that because we can plan for it if, if we know that that's going to happen. So let me go ahead and just and speed this up again. And we just want to watch it for a minute. Um, I also want to point out that this has a lot to do with uh, the sunspot activity, um, but that's a whole nother video, uh, and I, I don't really want to get into that, but it is something to think about. You know, we have been looking at a solar minimum right now, uh, and it has a lot to do with these planets and uh, the, the tidal forces um, in our solar system. Uh, so here we are, we're uh, going through 
uh, the middle part, the summer months of 2021, and these uh, gravitational masses coming very close to each other. Uh, and again, this is August 6th, so the beginning of August. Uh, we have another, you know, again, whenever these things are going to line up like this, uh, we definitely need to be keeping our eyes open and, and paying attention. Uh, there is definitely a correlation there. And um, I, I'm going to go and wrap that, wrap this up here. Um, I do hope that everyone here, uh, you know, I hope that everything here makes sense to you. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, you know, that's what the, the comment section is for you below. Uh, and if you need to reach me uh, because you want to fund my global expedition to find answers, or if you uh, need to know where to send my Nobel Peace Prize, you know, you can, <laughs> you guys can always reach me at dabblers.dan at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, I truly mean that. And we'll see you next time. Bye.